Yo, what's going on, fellas? I'm Demigodson, a GM1 Reaper one trick, and I'm gonna teach you everything you'll need to know about how to play Reaper in Overwatch 2. Now, before we start, I don't usually do content like this, so if you enjoy it, leave a like and let me know what you wanna see next. All right, let's go. Reaper is an absolute unit of a DPS hero. He's really tanky and deals a lot of damage up close, but the problem is he's got absolutely horrible range. And because of this, there are two ways to properly get value out of Reaper, flanking and frontlining. When you play Reaper, you want to be able to cycle these playstyles. Let's say we're at the beginning of a team fight. This is your opening to go on the flank. Uh, you can use your shadow step to take a position behind, usually on a high ground or a hidden position in the enemy back lines, somewhere close enough to your team or a health pack to be able to wraith back safely. If it's too obvious or too far away, you will get punished. Your main goal on this flank should be to harass the back line and be able to waste resources or even get a pick on one of the enemy supports. After that, you should wraith back to your team and start playing in the frontline playstyle. When you frontline with Reaper, when your team pushes in, you gotta play with your tank and pressure the enemy tank. You wanna do a lot of damage to the enemy tank, so the enemy team will have to use cooldowns to keep their frontline alive. And if you flanked successfully, the sports shouldn't have cooldowns to help their tank, which allows you to pretty much just run over their entire team. Your whole purpose of being in the frontline is to make the tank 1v1 unfair, and in a situation where your tank does die, you're the closest thing to a tank. Your support's gotta pocket you while you take control of space and take the team fight in your own hands. And let's be honest, Reaper kinda blows against any hero with range. And because of this, you gotta hold corners and take natural cover. You wanna play in positions where the enemies can't poke you out and they're forced to fight close range with you. Now, even though I say it's a cycle of these two playstyles, it, it doesn't exactly mean that you should be flanking every single fight. Flanking every fight makes you predictable, and the enemy team can take advantage of you being away from your team and just push in. And sometimes, depending on the ultimates that the enemies have, you might need to stay with your team to help them. With all that out of the way, let's move on to his kit. These shotguns are absolutely deadly. To properly get kills and get value out of the damage you're doing, you need to focus one target at once. Switching targets all the time makes the damage you're doing meaningless because you're not getting any picks and the enemy supports just farm ult charge. Although you can hold down primary fire to shoot, I wouldn't recommend this. You should tap shoot because it makes it easier to perfectly time and aim all your shots. And for some reason, the thing that everyone believes is that you could cancel Reaper's reload with melee. Although this isn't true, you might as well do it anyway because it's the same amount of time as normal reloading, and plus you get the extra melee damage, so you might as well. And I know it sounds goofy, but if you're good at aiming, you can hold positions that cut off enemy DPS from being able to take angles or flanks, such as Faras or Tracers. These positions must be in locations where you can take advantage of natural cover and safely get back to your team. Lifesteal is very important to Reaper's survivability, so look out when the enemy tanks have armor, because it will significantly reduce the amount of health you gain because of their damage resistance. If you are low in the middle of a fight, you need to look for big targets to farm lifesteal off of. And then once you're healed up, go back to looking for picks or pressuring the enemy tank. Wraithform is your most important ability. It gives you 3 seconds of invulnerability, a small speed boost, it cleanses and reloads. It's useful in like a million ways, so using it correctly is the most important part of playing Reaper. The main use of Wraithform should be saving your life. When flanking, Wraithform is the safest way to get back to your team. When in a team fight, Wraithform should be used to survive ultimates or mass amounts of damage. Do not use Wraith to engage in fights or to reload unnecessarily. Wasting or being forced to use Wraith makes you an extremely vulnerable target and you will get focused and die. The best way to improve your Wraith form management is just to play the game more. The only way to learn from bad Wraith forms is to be punished for them. Dying from bad Wraith forms forces you to adapt and get better at Wraith management. Now everyone clowns on Shadow Step, but it's actually a pretty good ability. Shadow Step is your free ticket to the enemy backline or back from spawn. To Shadow Step without being punished, you want to TP in positions where the enemy can't see you, and also make sure that it's not obvious that you're TPing. So I'd suggest TPing to high grounds or in a hidden spot. Also keep in mind you can TP in the air as well, which lets you get to spots that you couldn't get to before. 
and it also lets you move to cover while TPing so you can hide the fact that you're flanking. This can also be used to avoid damage if you need to escape or you're getting shot at. Another small thing with TP is that if you're in a desperate situation, it actually cleanses you. So you can TP if you really need to and it will clear any of your debuffs. One final thing about Shadow Step, and this also applies to Death Blossom, it puts you in third person and that really should be utilized. You're able to see everything around you, and when you're finished TPing, it'll face you in the direction that you were looking in third person, which lets you turn instantly when you exit the animation. I'm gonna keep it a buck, this ultimate sucks. Which doesn't mean that it's a bad ultimate, people just expect too much out of it. Everyone waits too long for the perfect 4k or 5k blossom, do not do this, you're not even guaranteed to have a good blossom because everything in this game counters it. And also, you'll be waiting the entire game for the perfect blossom moment. Holding your ult for that long is just a waste of time. A good blossom can be only one or two picks, that's really all you need to win a teamfight, so don't be afraid to solo ult some poor Zenyatta in the backline. But before you blossom the Zenyatta, you should shoot him first. Shooting a priority target before ulting does a high amount of burst damage and will kill that target before they can react to your death blossom. It's best to shoot Zens with Trans, Lucio's with B, Ana's with Sleep, pretty much anything that can hard counter your ultimate. To set up a blossom, you could either flank, hide in a funny spot, or push in with your team. It's best to do that with a Lucio so you can speed amp and clear the area. If you make it blatantly obvious that you're gonna ult, the enemy team are gonna play around that and focus you or run away from your ultimate, so try not to make it obvious. Another good way to use Blossom is hiding around a corner so when the enemy team pushes in, you can counter their push with your Blossom. If you've seen any of my Death Blossoms, you'll notice that like I spin the camera like three times and I do that to check my surroundings and look for the next target. Also a small fact, Death Blossom does reload your shotguns, so after you ult you can go right back into the fight. Hope you learned something from this video, comment down below if you got any questions or if you want to see more content like this, or you can join my discord server and talk to me there too. I'll see y'all fellas in the next video. Got a lifestyle that my mama can't believe Model bitches from Belize Got a begging baby please Rags dirty like some dishes Gotta wash them in the sink Snag you down to the floor WWG If he asking for a feel I gotta tax him I ain't never going broke I'm getting rice in